Hello and welcome to Auto Shenanigans. How the devil are you? Have you had a good week? My name is John. Thank you very much for joining me for an exciting yet slightly different episode of Secrets of the Motorway. This week we're exploring the most famous motorway that isn't a motorway, the M96. You may have seen it in various press articles labelled as a secret motorway, but I'm sorry to tell you it's neither secret nor a motorway. The M96 motorway that isn't a motorway runs for around 400 metres or so. It doesn't have any junctions, but if it was a real motorway, it might be considered the shortest motorway in the country. So what's the deal with this secret motorway that's not a secret nor a motorway? Let's find out. But before we look into it, we need to fill out the video, so let's look at the history of the site and how it came to be. In 1940, work began on the construction of a new airfield next to the town of Morton in Marsh and in 1941 the RAF started moving in despite the fact that not all the buildings were completed. I can only imagine they were in a rush. What was happening in 1941? The airfield was built with three tarmac runways in the usual RAF A-shaped layout along with five aircraft hangars. The main unit based at RAF Morton was the 21st operational training unit and it was here that they would train pilots to fly Wellington bombers for service in the Middle East. They came back to their home aerodrome, but not all came back. In 1986, the remains of aircraft LN693 were discovered not far from the airfield, having laid there for 42 years. Some sources say that the plane crashed following pilot error during a cross-country operational training exercise. However, some other sources say that the reasons for the crash are unknown. The remains of the aircraft were moved to the Midlands Air Museum, but I don't know if it's still there or not. Pilots continued to be trained at RAF Morton until 1955, when eventually the flying ended. The RAF held onto the site, though, until 1959. During that time, it was used for the training of firefighters fighting techniques for use during nuclear war, something that was all the rage at the time. After 1959, the Home Office took over the site, renaming it as the Home Office Fire Training Centre. Today, it's known as the Fire Service College, where they train firefighters in practical real-world environments. The site is quite remarkable, actually. It was built up over a few years, from the late 60s to the mid-70s, officially opening in 1974. The new Fire Service Technical College at Morton and Marsh. Arriving to open the college, the Queen is received by Home Secretary Roy Jenkins. But it wasn't actually until 1976 that all of the buildings were completed, so it seems like history's repeating itself a little bit there and people were in a bit of a rush to get started. Now, about those buildings. As I mentioned, the primary use of the site is to train firefighters in real-world environments. And what better way to simulate this than build the environment that you want? Let's say you want to train your personnel in the ways of handling a train crash. Well, here you go. Here's a railway, complete with locomotives, rolling stock, and everything that you need to make it a very convincing real-world incident. What's more, the whole thing can be set on fire. Repeatedly. And that goes for a lot of the training areas across the site. They're designed to be set on fire time and time again, obviously for training purposes. There's a pair of fighter jets. I don't know, tornadoes maybe? But they're just sat about waiting whatever training exercise is required of them. And if you have a look around, there are various other props and structures that certainly would be useful in an aircraft or airfield training environment. So all of these exciting things just for training purposes. I imagine if you were a member of the fire service, it would probably be quite a nice day out. As for the real world situations, yeah, let's ignore those. Let's take a look at what what's called the commercial building. Extending over four stories with a basement, it's the largest fire building of its type in the world. It's designed to replicate a warehouse, shopping centre, hotel or office block incident. This steel structure is supposed to give the impression of being on an oil rig, and with its winding stairs, tight corridors and small spaces, I imagine it's rather convincing. They're also able to test or train using LPG or fuel-based fires, which I imagine are more commonplace on an oil rig. The opening sequence was filmed on this simulated oil rig platform, but also served as a chemical plant. I could be here all day looking at the various training areas, but let's get on to the M96. That's the reason we're here. And I'm sorry to disappoint, but there are no real secrets for us to look at. The site itself is what provides the mystery and the interest, but this is a show about motorways, so here we are. The M96 then, as I said earlier, a mere 400 metres in length. But size isn't everything, and at several lanes wide, it's certainly got some girth the Chode motorway. It's mainly used to simulate car crashes in a motorway environment, and I imagine that isn't much of a surprise given what we've learned. If you're curious, here's a Google satellite image from a few years ago that shows a car accident on the motorway. The pretend motorway itself is actually fairly realistic. It's got a central reservation barrier, overhead gantry, emergency refuge area complete with vintage SOS phones, and all of the signs are rather official looking. It'd be great to drive on it, wouldn't it? I did ask for permission, but it's, um, 
it's a no. What I thought was quite funny though is when you're navigating around the site, the signs are all made up like official road signs pointing you in the direction of the M96. It's all overly realistic, but then I suppose that's the point. And there we are. There's not much more to say really. This episode was more about the site than the motorway, but what can you do? Thank you very much for watching. I hope you liked the video. If you did, there is of course a button specifically for that. And if you hadn't subscribed yet, please consider doing so. That would really help me out. Enjoy the rest of your week, whatever it is you get up to. My name is John. You've been watching Auto Shenanigans, and I'll see you next time for another exciting episode of Secrets of the Motorway. Till then, take care. Bye-bye. Thank you.